happiness. There's yellow for when you're bored and black for when you're really, really angry. Why is Blue sad? The whole problem here is his attitude. He's impulsive and aggressive and he never turns in his homework. We're talking about abnormal behavior for a boy his yeah, age. Hurry, grow up. You can get in trouble for this, you idiot! Do you know why you're here? Because I'm like a Zen Dias. No, you have ADHD. Do you know what that is? <laughs> that I'm always angry. Are you always angry? No. Is it true Tommy stopped taking his medication? Yes. Why didn't you notify the school? It's a family decision. No, it isn't. It's negligence. Please be reasonable. Otherwise, you're going to lose custody. You don't know me nor Tommy. You don't know shit. Cozy bitch. What if they don't like me? Who? The others. The Tom on the pills is much better than me. Hi, Dr. Shaw. What's that stinky smell? Well, I think it's you. So, uh, good afternoon to you. Yes. Uh, my name is Thomasina Farrar. My website is musicmoviestoughts.com, and I very much appreciate you taking the time to interview with me today. Thank no, you very no, much. thanks to you, please. Yes. Thanks to you. I love this story. I um, I work in social services. I okay. that's my full time job. I place children in the foster care system. I recognize these characters. I recognize Tom and the adults that were in his environment. And it was just a joy to view this film. Um, oh, now I you. haven't read Miss Santulo's uh, novel, yes. um, but I wanted to know, like, what was it about this story that was important to bring to the masses? What, why did you want to make this film and tell this story? Well, mostly, uh, mostly because we realize, I mean, we are fathers, father and mother, Laura, yes, we have two sons, and when we become fathers, we realize the, the, the excess of medication in childhood, mm -hmm. how easy they, they get to diagnose this controversial diagnosis of ADHD, yes? yes. And uh, they are medicating them. The school are like leading a little bit towards the, 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 the psycho the psychomedicines, mm -hmm. the, the psychological medicines, and they go to psychologists, okay. and mm -hmm. very easily they are starting to medicate. So we got worried about that because we thought that uh, maybe the percentage was too much of kids medicated. I am, mm -hmm. We are not saying that uh, some kids need help, yes? yes. But Maybe it's too much. Maybe maybe we are going too far. And if they are saying there are like between five percent, all depend on the source, and ten percent of kids medicated, maybe as a society we should try to think a way that where they can fit in. You know, why do we want to change them? This ten percent of kids to be like the others and not. To, re to, to, to get this, uh, this idea of success, no? uh, an expectation that we have on the kids. And maybe we should, to start, we should start thinking about creating a space for them, be more tolerant with the differences, yes? And yes, and yes, something like that. Because it, it, what, we, what, what, what we saw is that the way they, they make the diagnosis, we think it's a little bit uh, like simple, yes? Because they concentrate on the observation of the behavior of the kids. Mm -hmm. And the, despite of the context, is there a father? Is there, no, there is not a father? Are they mm -hmm. coming from violent environments and things like that? So, mm -hmm. uh, so behaviors that were like, uh, 
normal in in childhood before now mm -hmm. i've been diagnosed like a pathology yes it's been look so that's why we 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 try to do this film because we want to talk and to continue thinking about what we are doing as a society medicating our kids yes okay now do you both or either of you have any personal experiences are there children or persons that have been impacted in your life that have experienced being diagnosed um very quickly um given psychotropic medication that did not work for them how did you um, you know, research this story. How did you become familiar with Alina and Tom's characters in that respect? Yes. Well, uh, my mother, she's a psychoanalyst. Okay. Yes. And she specializes in kids. Okay. So, yes, different uh, diseases in kids, autism mm -hmm. and other kinds of kids. So she led us on which kind of book we could read. And then we did a lot of research in, in, in chats, you know, and we read the story of the people because they, they, they used to post things that give us like, uh, that, yes, that give us the, the way they behave, what was happening with them. Like an example, the name, the other Tom, there was mm -hmm. a kid who said he was a teenager, but he's, he had been taking medicines for, I don't know, like six years. And he was talking about he was different person. Mm -hmm. the, the, he was one person without medicine, drugs, and he was another one. So this dialogue, we took it from this boy, you know, we saw, okay. the, yeah, his statement mm -hmm. through the internet and all that. And it happened to us once, but mostly we were changing country and our kid with five years old, he was like, I don't know. He was like this. I don't. I don't have the word in English, but like disconcerted. How do you say that? We we took him out of his context and we throw it in another place where he doesn't like know anybody. Yes. yes. Yeah, he was a little bit like, uh, what's going on with my life? Where where I where I am? Yes. So we went with a psychiatrist, and after talking with me and with Laura. She said, oh, there are some medicines that are great to control the kids. And we were like, come on, you haven't seen the kid yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you are already prescribing mm -hmm. medicines without knowing him. You, you don't really know if our point of view is it's, that uh, is distorted by our, I don't know, maybe we are not like, not like a person, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes, like maybe you are like a little bit crazy and you are medicating someone without looking at him. So we realized it was very easy to get medicated. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So in a way, yes, we made a big, big, big research. Okay. We, you mentioned um, the boy that you knew personally and the other time where that came from. I was wondering about the title and the scene in the movie, there's a scene where he, Tom Israel Rodriguez, this character Tom is in a school play. And uh, the there's another little boy who's cast the lead. His name is Tom, but he's exhibiting this bad behavior. I think the line was uh, Tom is bad again or, or being bad again or something to that extent. Uh. And I thought that that was just so like, how could a teacher knowing that there was this Tom in her classroom with these certain behaviors that was being labeled, that was being ostracized by other children, like they couldn't change the name of the lead in the play. Now I'm not familiar. I don't know if this is like a base, if the play is based off an actual folklore or tale, but I just thought they could have changed the name of that lead character. And <laughs> To not have this little boy, you know, just feel so additionally ostracized by it. That was just very disheartening to see. Yes. You mean, excuse me, because my English is not That's perfect. fine. Are, yes. are you talking about the, the, the scene of Tom Sawyer? That was the time. Okay. I've, I've never read Tom Sawyer. Okay. Um, okay. So clearly because the, the title the, could not have been changed, but yeah. yeah. Because, because he's looking... I mean, after we read a, an article of Anne Applebaum, yes, yes, yes. And, and she said something like, 
she was talking and, and yes uh, about uh, ADHD and how they are diagnosed yes. and, and all that and and she finished this article saying that if Tom Sawyer or Huckleberry Finn live it in these days they will be medicated right. totally medicated that was right. that's why okay. we chose the name, chose the name. Of okay. Tom and that's I mean, why, I... and that's why we had a scene of Tom yes. Sawyer like yes. paint, painting the <laughs> fence you know that's why yes i thought it also spoke to though because there's another scene not to give too much away but there's another scene where a teacher um compliments him and that strikes elena and she talks about that this doesn't normally happen you're the only teacher that has done this you know and i just you know it's just remarkable it was remarkable for me because they're you know and this is not to um, slam teachers um, in any type of way, because especially here in the United States, you know, a lot of teachers are overworked. They spend a lot of their own money on materials, you know, and oftentimes some kids, you know, get caught up and, and kind of slip through the cracks. And so they're put in regular education classrooms where they can't get the individual attention that they need. But there are some persons that need to, you know, spend a little more time paying attention to and catching those children who are exhibiting certain behaviors you know that does happen exactly because what we try it through the different teachers is mm-hmm. to find the balance i mean the the first teacher she has no patience she's in a way she's new she doesn't even know the name of the kid because she's calling yes. him adrian yes, yes. <laughs> come on adrian she's over 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 something yes of and a, another student well, corrects her. Yeah, yeah and another student because he's not even the kid she, she thinks she's talking to yes yes yeah so because yes sometimes sometimes start medicating kids or depends on the patience of that the adult who is beside them yes right and, and at the same time you have another teacher who finds him very nice, you know, and who finds he has talents and he's mm-hmm. a very nice kid. So it's, I think, about perception. Yes? Yes. That's, that's why sometimes this way of diagnosing ADHD based on the observation of the behavior, like does he, off, does he has difficulty finishing task? Does he moves too much? What's too much? That's related. Mm-hmm to the adult who is looking. Maybe if you don't have a patient father or a patient teacher or a patient doctor, they will medicate it, but maybe another one will not. That's why we, we try to find balance between those teachers that mm-hmm. like having different point of views. Yes, <laughs> on the kid. Yes. Absolutely. I think as a teacher, just knowing his behaviors for me, I probably would have put him in another scene. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand what you did there. Um, so I don't want to spoil the ending, but Elena eventually makes different choices that aren't necessarily a mental health related um, per se. She makes choices in the environment to the benefit of Tom. Um, so my question is, do you, are we t- to think as the audience that that's the road she's going to continue on? Or do you think she balances that out with alternative mental health options? Again, I have not read the book, so I don't know if there is additional, you know, um, story there. But I, I personally would like to believe that she would locate something alternate for him because the medications that were initially um, prescribed for him they weren't for him. They didn't work, you know, as a matter of fact, they were kind of causing harm. So does she look for alternate mental health therapies in addition to changing the environment for Tom and and changing the family dynamics for Tom? I think she does. I mean, she even says that to the psychiatrist when she gets Mm -hmm. mad because she, I mean, she didn't know nothing about this disease. Yes. And suddenly he's, he's, he's medicating he changed his behavior. He's better at school. They are complaining less. So it seems to work. But at the same time, this strange accident happens mm-hmm. and, and doubts comes to her. 
Am I doing right? Was it the medicine, the psychiatric medicine I am giving him that lead him to do something that uh, it shouldn't happen? Yes. What about right. side effects? So she changed that. She changed that. So uh, she, she started searching on the internet information and she finds there are psychopedagogue, there are other kinds of treatment mm -hmm. without drugs. And she starts to believe this is the path she wants. But obviously, she's like a, a character woman. She's, she, she's too young as a, as a mother. She has a lot of things to live yet. And, mm -hmm. and, and she's very impulsive and she makes mistakes. And this is something we like about the the characters we usually do in the films. We like characters that make mistakes, that have to take choices, and they react in a way that they are mistaken, they are not helping, yes? Right. But it, 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 it gives the audience the opportunity to, to, to relate with them, yes? To, yes. Uh, and to speculate and to say, don't do that, please don't, no, come on, don't, do, don't react like that, come on, you are not helping, yes? <laughs> Something like that, but yes, right. I think that she changed. She, she yeah. changed through the film, yes. Okay, and I actually, it's funny you say that because there were a couple of things I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. No, but... don't do that, it's like, <laughs> come on. I really like though how you highlighted how much of a burden this could be. Like you said, she was young. She's a single parent. Um, she's limited financially, mm -hmm. yet she was very vocal and, and she didn't have the knowledge, like you mentioned earlier. She didn't, you know, have the knowledge about mental health diseases or disorders. She this was all new to her, but she did care about her son and she wanted to do things in his best interest. But I love how she advocated for him. I mean, she was vocal, even it, despite those circumstances. You love how what? You love how I love how vocal and how she advocated for him. Like she she really, even though she had all of these other circumstances and she might have had some deficits. She was very vocal and, you know, speaking out. And many parents sometimes don't feel empowered to do that. Can you talk a little about, you know, how you wrote that character to be that way? Vocal is that she says things. That she, she you know, challenges the, the medical doctor. She challenges the teachers. Oh, yes, and she advocated yes. for him. She wasn't yes. playing. Like, this is my child and that doesn't no, sound right. Like. Yes. <laughs> yes. We, we, I mean, we wanted to make like a, 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 a realistic character, like not the ideal mother. You know, she's not the ideal woman. She's just a loving mother who has difficult being mother because it's tough to be mother, it's tough to be father, and we don't have a manual how to do it, you know? So I think love moves her, but in a way she's difficult and, and, and she's not comfortable with the burden of having a child alone, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why she reacts difficulty. And that's why the kid also, it's complicated because she has a mother who is complicated. It's not like a spontaneous thing that just happened to right. the life of the kid, you know? Right. She behaves, he behaves like that because the mother is difficult in a way right. also. Yes. She's not. Yes. And, and yes, and she finds release, and this is something happy, happy to happen to her when she has sex with other men, you know, in a way it's something nice that happens to her, you know? Mm -hmm. So suddenly she gets out of these problems, and right. yes, but okay. she has a lot of things that she has to re resign, you say, like being a mother, mm -hmm. yes, like youth, like... Yes, being in love with others, yes. And this this is reflecting the in her character, I think so. Okay. Yes. So you talk about how um uh, Julia Chavez and Israel Rodriguez were chosen for the parts, especially Israel. Like I thought he did at his young age a magnificent job playing both this hyperactive, you know, always moving, always getting into something type of child, and then to switch once he's medicated to this more subdued, you know, definitely not his self type of child. Yes. I mean, it was, it was 
just luck, I think, you know, I mean, just luck find him because he was amazing since the beginning. I mean, when we make the first cast with him, he was someone who could understand his feelings and express it very clear. Uh, at the beginning, the film was wrote in, wrote in Spanish. So the, 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 the relationship between the mother and the son was going to be in Spanish. But we found this kid who was born in the United States, who is Mexican-American, yes, and who was so great that we changed yeah. everything, yes? Okay. And she, she's born also in the United in, States. In, okay. she's, she's bilingual, but he's not. So we did it in English at the end. Yes. And, and he was amazing. He, he has homeschool. Okay. So in a way, he was not far, very far from our character because he okay. has, he's having homeschool because some schools are difficult with him, you know, because they find him different. He's very, very smart, yeah. very smart, but he's special. He's like a little adult sometimes. Yes, <laughs> he's, yes. Yeah. And, and, and that working car with, scene was, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> I'm like screaming, like, no, he didn't just do that. No, yeah, <laughs> I, I, you never know what happens. And right. the doubt is enough for her to change. So yes, we work with a lot of improvisation also with the kids and we teach them how to, how to act in a way because no, none of them are like professional actors. They and are, experience. Okay. everybody is a natural actor. They are just people from El Paso who, okay. all, who has other jobs. Mm -hmm. And but as you say, the, the CPS people, Child Protective Service yes. people, mm -hmm. they used to work on that. So they do, they know the dynamics. Right. So I steal the dynamics from there. You know, we included in the film and uh, working with all the actors was like that. Yes, it was like teaching them how to react in front of the camera and all that. Obviously, we choose people who were who has a lot of natural, uh, you know, like. Yeah way of doing it okay so, sorry my english is sometimes no just... you're you're doing very well thank you um so we have limited time i have a couple of minutes yes. i do want to work in again my site is called musicmoviesthoughts.com the signature signature question that i asked uh, several people is if you could um do a film about any artist any artist of your choice past or present who would it be and why Artist, you mean musician? It could be musician. It could be actor. Um, someone gave me a literal artist one time, a, a painter, I believe. Um, yes. It's difficult to say. I should be making choirs of their lives. But I don't know. I, I like Antonio Lovantunes. He's a Portuguese writer. Okay. He's great. And he's been in... I don't know. He's a great writer. Maybe okay. his life is interesting. I don't know what to say, but at least I would recommend read Antonio Lobantunes. He's a great writer. Would you mind spell his last name for me? Antonio Lobo, Lobo like Wolf. Yes. Antunes. Antunes. Yes. Okay. He's a Portuguese writer. He's okay. wonderful. Yes. Yes. Thank you so no, much. Thanks. Mr. Pla. Um, I no, really thank appreciated you. the film. Um, and I just want to encourage everyone who looks at this video. It's a great film, The Other Tom. Um, and thank you for coming on no. and, and talking about it. I appreciate you. Please. Thank you very much. Thank you very right. much for the space. Thank you, sir. <laughs>